Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Th thank you for coming to the stream, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead, turn that down, make sure I'm good. That way I can hear myself in case something's going on. Um, today is Thursday. We, we're trucking along. As we go along, let me go ahead on and share this stream real quick. Give me a second. Um, <laughs> As I get this stream shared, we're going to have a little conversation about O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson, our great brother, has transitioned, and he went on with his ancestors. I already see some people in the chat asking about why is why does uh, the why, I don't know, I guess the hosts have to have that smile on the thumbnail of this subject. Um, that's the smile I have just like in the picture. I don't care about the subject matter. And the way I was raised, when you are transitioning, especially when you live past 70 years, that is something to, you know, celebrate or look back at your legacy. Um, isn't that shouldn't be something that should be extremely sad? It shouldn't. That's the way I've always looked at things. Now, if you pass away early in your life, then that's another question, right? But even there, if people that have been sick pass away or they know they're going to pass away, and they say, hey, don't be crying at my funeral like that. Hey, celebrate my life. So we believe in the celebration of life here. That's what we believe in. And yes, they can't stand OJ. And yes, the folks is going to be in here tonight because they still can't get over how the justice system actually worked for a change for a black man in America. OJ Simpson, it, it, it actually worked for him. We rarely see that. Um, and we're getting to talking about that time period because, hey, I grew up in that time period. I was a kid. I was in high, uh, I think it was in middle school, high school around that time uh, when all that was going on. And we will get to that. Um, as we are going along, I will be doing my live streams. Uh, I will commit to doing my live streams while in South Africa, um, next week. I mean, I looked at the time difference, so I'll make sure to get up at that time to keep doing the streams at the same time, you know, at least Monday through Friday, uh, just to make sure it can give y'all something, um, while, while I'm there, uh, we, you know, it's something I just want to commit to. Um, yeah, we, we, about OJ, you know, I have a, all the news apps on my phone. So in, anything that happens, everything hits my phone at one time. I get notification, notification, notification. So I was talking, you know, with, you know, different members of the team this morning. And that's when that kind of came across. I said, oh, shoot, OJ. I said, OJ passed. I said, oh man. Okay. Okay. Look, look, this, this Scrooge uh, McDuck person. Why are you upset with, with, with OJ uh, going to be with his ancestors? Why are you so upset about that? I'm not upset about that. Not at all. Not at all. You see, you see, y'all, y'all are so mad that OJ beat y'all at something. He beat y'all at your own system. Y'all so mad about that. Y'all didn't care nothing about that. That uh, his ex-wife Nicole Brown. You didn't care about Ron Goldman. You didn't even know who these people were. You used them as proxies. And we'll talk about that a little later. But first, before we get to breaking down that proxy war at that time period and how them folks was using Ron, Ronald Goldman and Nicole Brown as proxies for their sick uh, sickness, or what they try to do against black people, we'll get to that. But let's go ahead on and get to the devotion first. I don't care what the subject matter is. We're going to have our devotion. So let's go ahead and get to our favorite 
devotional uh, uh, meeting. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet, the mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work, no work. Mm. What, what is that? No comment. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all self. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. So this is what it's all about, guys. They don't want a black person in power. They don't want a woman in power. You know, if you ain't seen that yet. And someone so young. Everybody got to understand, God give you what you can handle. That's what God give you. He ain't going to give you more than that. As long as you can stay, stay the course, fight the fight, and keep going, that's what we're going to do here at Thornton Township. And we've been doing a doggone good job. Clark, what are you doing? You're out of order. You out of order. Did I call the road? Did I say call the road? I'm still speaking. You're out of order, Clerk Key. You out of order, Clerk Key. Like stop. Y'all out of order. Everybody wanna run stuff. Y'all don't run this house over here. Stop, please. All right. That is uh your super mayor there, Tiffany Henyard, out of Dalton. And uh yeah, we'll keep up with, with her story at, as always. So let's get to our brother OJ Simpson. So I had uh, seen and put this up on the screen. We'll read this uh, together real quick. This was posted from OJ Simpson's um, ex account on April 10th. Our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. It said during this time of transition, his family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. The Simpson family. Now we know the privacy and grace would not be extended, not because of the black community uh, at large, but it would not be extended because you have uh, the folks and their things that they like to do. They don't respect black people on a good day. So why would they respect a black person when they pass away? These people are gonna be coming out with all kind of alternative history, alternative facts. These people are going to try to lie about the case. They're lying now. I just seen somebody tell me they about to put out a new documentary about it. I'm like, and they talk, discuss this right when the man died. Now you're talking about a documentary. Why you didn't put it out when he was alive? That way it could be debunked, right? It can still be debunked even though he's not here anymore. But these people, ladies and gentlemen, are not well. And, and, and you have to understand that you have to understand that racism, white supremacy is a, 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 a mental disease. It is a spiritual sickness. It's all of that wrapped into one. If you try to rationalize how they move, you're going to give yourself the biggest migraine in the world. So OJ, one of his last videos he had put up was this one here. Go ahead on cue up and listen to OJ one of his last videos. Hey, x World, it's me, yours truly. Boy, what a beautiful day it is here in Las Vegas. Even though the game is indoors, it wouldn't have mattered, but still, it's nice to have a beautiful day like this. Hey, let me take a moment to say thank you to all the people who reached out to me. Uh, uh, my health is good. I mean, obviously, I'm dealing with some issues, uh, but hey, I think I'm just about over it, and I'll be uh, back on that golf course, hopefully in a couple of weeks. But it was very nice hearing from you and hearing those good, positive words. Thank you. Now OJ did not get back to the golf course. Unfortunately, he's playing the golf course uh, with, with the Lord right now. And, and he can play golf with the Lord all day and with his ancestors. And, you know, OJ, he, he's, he lived uh, definitely a full life. And OJ was the hero we didn't ask for in black America, but OJ was the hero that we got at one point in time. Now we know our OJ Simpson was a great college football player. He's a great NFL player. No one would take that away from him. OJ had a career in movies, television. You know, he used to do the Hertz commercials. Those of you used to know that he, he would do all those commercials. You know, OJ running in the airport, and all of that. 
OJ would be in those naked gun movies with the other comedian, Leslie Nielsen. OJ was funny in those movies. If you ever watch those naked gun movies, go back and watch it. It was, it was funny. Everything was all good for OJ until one fateful day that his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ronald Goldman, come out dead. And the LAPD blamed O.J. Simpson. All of us in the black community at that time was shocked to say, huh, O.J.? Like nobody would even think of something like that about O.J. Simpson. So they charged O.J. Simpson with murder of his ex-wife and Ronald Goldman. O.J. at the time, of course, he assembled his dream team of lawyers. They talked about it at the time. You know, Johnny Cochran, you know, as you know, he had Robert Shapiro, you know, he had uh, Kim Kardashian's father on the team, um, you know, Robert Kardashian. I know he had Alan Dershowitz and now you look at the stuff that Alan Dershowitz is doing now, like, huh? And you was on the dream team. Uh, what was the other guy that was the other expert? I forgot his name, white gentleman. I forgot his name. His face is in my head, but I forgot his name. Maybe some of y'all. Yeah, the Naked Gun movie was funny with OJ. It was funny. Now, we all remember the infamous, you know, Bronco chase, and it wasn't a chase. It was not a chase. But we all remember the media, oh, the media, they, they, they hyped this trial up. This is one of the first trials they put on TV, because we never seen a trial like that on TV. CNN, back before CNN was what it is today, CNN used to be a little balanced here and there, but you have to understand every white media outlet is, is on team white supremacy. It don't matter if they left white balance. And we at that time period didn't have what we have today. We didn't have our own black media, our own black fact checkers to check them. But they always tell me they got fact checkers. No, we got our own today and we can correct their lies and their falsehoods when we could not do that back in the nineties. You understand? See today when they put out a lie, we can easily go through footage. You know, we can easily go to articles. There's so many things we can catch you on now that they didn't have back in that time period. You know, today you have more surveillance now. Back in that time period, everybody didn't have a cell phone. So you couldn't ping a location back then. Um, everybody didn't have a camera on their uh, uh, front door like now. Most people got cameras at their houses or at least a ring camera or some camera at the front door. Um, you, you know what I'm saying? The, of course we had cameras back then, but maybe businesses had it or whatever. Now it, we live in a surveillance state. We are completely surveilled from one end to another in just about all the cities in America. Definitely your major cities. Even you got red light cameras now. It was a time period we didn't really have all that going on. Okay. If a OJ Simpson case would have happened today, it wouldn't even got as far as it did because you would have had more surveillance. You would have figured out exactly what OJ was at the time due to pinging his cell phone, find out what tower his cell phone was at at the time. They couldn't use that like they would do today. So we wasn't as connected as we are today with social media, or whatever, like today they can see when you made your last post, versus where you was at, where they hit the cell phone. It's so many different things you got now. They, they'll track you through your cell phone. They'll see what you post on social media. Maybe you gave some evidence or something. And so prosecutors use that in, in, in cases or you, your defense attorney can use it too and say, hey, he was over here live streaming. How he can be over there and he's live streaming over here. You know what I'm saying? So we just didn't have all that back in that time period, but it was a little bit better time. I mean, just to be real with you, um, we actually communicated more in the black community, believe it or not, when we didn't have all this technology. Yes, the drug dealer, they had their beepers in, in those flip phones, but it was a drug dealer thing. It wasn't a, a everyday person thing like they have today. So as we know, this case became literally a proxy war. This is what I was talking about earlier. All the time, when you look at the way uh, uh, racism and white supremacy work, they like to use proxy wars. They like to use certain black people as a representation of black America. And the representation of black America at that time was OJ Simpson. 
And the folks wanted their representation to be Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman. As I said earlier, the folks did not care about Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman at all. Didn't care about those people. They never cared about their life until that day. And it wasn't a case about if OJ did this or not, this was black America versus white America. Who's going to win? That's what it turned into. We as black Americans saw this. We saw this. We saw what they were doing and how they was really trying to railroad OJ at that time period. We peeped the game. We knew what they was doing. And so all of us in black America at that time was invested into that trial. Yeah. Kyra say, you remember Marshall Clark, and Chris Darden being upset? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Chris Darden, he, he was a straight up sellout. You know, I would say another word, but we can't say that too much on YouTube anymore, but it was a proxy war in LA. It was a lot of tension in LA at the time period. You know, you had so many different things going on, you know, prior to that, I think it was the LA riots and all it's so many different things that was going on. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, and, 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 and brothers and sisters in LA, they, they was about the business back, back in, back in that time period. You don't play a black people in LA. Oh no, no, no. But LA, that area, black people always been about the business out there. You know, this is why they, they do it, do it. They was doing everything they can to get black people out of LA and replace black people with a bunch of migrants in which that's what they did. And then they brought in hostile criminal migrants to get those black, a lot of black people out that way. And then the government of California made it so not affordable for black people. Now there's still some black people in LA and shout out to them, but they the last of the Mohicans. They holding on much as they can. But at one point in time, Los Angeles was heavily, heavily black, not full of migrants all over the place. Like they have it now. Black Americans understood what, what it was. And I remember the one part of the case where they, they were just trying to literally make like OJ was some sort of super, you know, black person. God, I wish I could say another word a super black person that he, he's going to sit here. Li listen to what they said. He did. He, he changed his clothes into some track suit, some, some loafers, got a knife. He took the life of his wife, took the life of Ron Goldman. Ron Goldman, you know, was fighting back. He was trying to defend himself. OG had nothing on him to show that he was in any kind of fight with a man that's trying to fight for his life on him. They stripped OJ down, took all kinds of pictures of OJ. He had none of that on him. And they still, it, 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 so he supposed to take the life of two people and be at the airport within 25 minutes. Have y'all been to LAX? Do you know how, how long it takes to get into LAX just on a good day? Even back then, LAX still had a lot of people coming in and out of LAX how he's going to knife down two people and be at LAX in 25 minutes. Y'all know how LA traffic is. If you've been in LA, you know, the traffic you, even back then, the traffic wasn't like you could just zoom to, to, to the airport. <sighs> now this other person, these, these, these people who lie, cause that's what see, you know, let me tell you, let me tell y'all something, the folks, you know why, you know why the honorable Elijah Muhammad had always said that when he called y'all, when he said that, that I'm talking about the racist ones, you know why he called y'all the devil? You know why he called you that? I'm gonna tell you why. In the scriptures it's, it's taught that the devil is the father of lies. And when you speak with the, a lying tongue, you speak in the voice of your father. When you lie on OJ, when you lie on black Americans, when you just lie and that's what you do, you lie because the truth is not in you. You cannot give the truth because this one liar who's affiliated with the devil, 
going to say OJ was a coke dealer. If that's the case of why didn't FBI didn't take him to prison for dealing drugs. Why the DEA didn't take him to prison for dealing drugs. If he was some big time coke dealer, he had, they had every agency investigating OJ Simpson. Why he never got charged with drugs. Never in his life. He got charged with any kind of drugs, but that's what the devil do. So when, when, so all, so you, you celebrating the death of OJ Simpson. OJ done more in his life than you would ever do in your existence. I promise you that. OJ had a stellar football career in college and the pros. OJ was rich. OJ had name recognition. He's in the hall of fame. OJ beat y'all at y'all own game with racism. That's what burned y'all about OJ. All that burned y'all. Let me put this picture up right here. Where this picture at? See, when your boy and Mark Furman, look at that picture. When your boy and Mark Furman right here, planting gloves, planting evidence because he was a racist and he was a liar and he planted evidence right there is when the jury saw that they say, Oh no, Oh no, no, no. Oh, the juice didn't do that. See, see, if OJ did something, y'all the one messed it up. If he did anything, but we, we know OJ didn't do nothing. OJ didn't do a thing. See, when you lie and y'all been doing this mess to black people all our lives, always trying to sabotage black men and women, trying to undermine black men and women, playing evidence, y'all st still do it to this day, playing drugs, planting this, planting that, um, even on body cam. Y'all get caught on body cam trying to plant evidence. How, how you know you got a body cam? You, I just saw a video the other day, y'all, of a black man. He had a little liquor in him, but he had a full bottle, but he didn't touch it. That police officer from their community went and opened a bottle of liquor, poured it out, and then put it back on his front seat and told the other cop, yeah, because he drunk that bottle of liquor that's on the thing. And she was on her own body camera pouring it out. Like, like how dumb, like you want to lie that much on a black person and you get caught in your own body cam. But, but, that, but that's how they operate, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, so our, our brother OJ right here is showing his innocence to the jury. He's showing his innocence. And... Right there is when the team, they got beat right there. And that picture right there, I want them to look at that picture. That's what y'all mad about right there. Y'all probably more, y'all should be mad at Mark Furman, not OJ. He was playing evidence, trying to plant all, all kinds of things. He, Johnny Cochran caught him and made him repeat every N word he said about black Americans. And y'all have never, never, never been over that case in point. When, when he was found not guilty because we knew this, what this was, OJ was basically carrying on his back, black America. When OJ was found not guilty, this, it, it was a reason why black people Jury did this. Jury in the above action find the defendant or it's all James Simpson not guilty of it. Now, I had a lot of music. We had to silence that. But you see how black people, and look, I celebrated the same way like them. That's in college, black people celebrating. And I'm going to tell you something about this case. This case exposed any of them folks that was around you that was that way, that was racist. This case exposed them. Look, look, they wasn't celebrating. Look at that. They weren't celebrating at all. It, 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 for real, for real, they would not celebrate. I remember in high school when we was all waiting for that verdict. And we were waiting and it said not guilty. Yeah, we all jumped up like, yeah, he's not guilty. And all our uh, 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 counterparts, who the folks, they were sitting there looking just like that woman on that, on that tape, mad, pissed off, shaking their head, I mean, it's like, it's like their soul was snatched out of them when OJ was found not, not guilty. You say, brother Johnny Cochran. Yeah. Johnny Cochran, man. 
where are the Johnny Cochran's of the world? We got all these attorneys on TikTok and, oh, I'm a lawyer. I got my law degree. Black lawyers stand up. Black law, but we got all these black lawyers, but where's the Johnny Cochran's? Where's the female Johnny Cochran's? Where, 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 where is the, 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 the male Johnny Cochran's? In every state. We got people in every state that need help. You, do you know before Johnny died, he was about to start fighting a case for reparations? Yes, he was going to start taking America to court to get our reparations before he died. Unfortunately, he died. Because I guarantee you, if Johnny would have did it, oh, we probably would have got our reparations. Oh, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. Because Johnny was the most thorough attorney out there. If you got Johnny, oh, you were good. That man was a master at picking a jury. He was a, most lawyers would tell you on criminal defense, when you defending somebody, that jury is picking that jury is key. It's more key than even your case. And that man was a master at picking juries. Yeah, now we got, I see you talking about Chase the Ambulance. Yeah, now we got Benjamin Crump. And there's nothing, and, and I'm not against Benjamin Crump. I'm not against the brother. But I'm saying is we need more Johnny Cochran's. We, we, we need that. We, we, we gotta have more. So, so please you, you young lawyers that's out here instead of flossing on TikTok, talking about how much of a lawyer you are, a black lawyer and your fraternity and sorority. Can we get some Johnny Cochran's out there that's going to defend the community? Can we do that? was see no evil regardless what happened with him the brother the brother passed away and that's that's what it is um oh you say he was in the football practice when that verdict came in yeah yeah the the, the brother passed away and that's and that's just um what it is you know that's what his family put out so I, I'm not gonna I, you know, here, we don't do the conspiracy theory route. We don't say, oh, this happened, that happened. Now, the family come out and say something, okay, then we'll give some credence to it. But, you know, every time something happened, everything is really not a conspiracy theory. Um, some things are just what they are. People do pass away. Uh, they say the man was battling prostate cancer. Now, you know, men, especially black men, we don't like to go to the doctor. Let's call it what it is. We don't. And I get why our history in America with doctors, but we need to try to find us a good black doctor and at least every year go to your doctor and get your yearly checkup. You know, definitely, you know, you're 45, you need to get your colonoscopy and all that stuff. You know, after you do it at 45, I think you have to do it at 55. And I think that's the last time you have to do it or so. So get all your checkups, men, you know, you remember when Kevin Samuels died and all of that, a lot of people were shocked. Um, you know, a lot of us as men, you know, we're not taking care of ourselves. I'm not saying OJ didn't go to the doctor. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking in general as black men, especially us as black men. We don't like to go to the doctor. Um, sisters, you need to go to the doctor too. You need to see your, your uh, primary care doctor once a year. You need to see your OBGYN once a year. If anything is going on, with you that is not normal, go, don't go to the doctor, you know, but we can also prevent the doctor by changing some of our eating habits, getting away from the fried foods, getting away from the high salts that we shouldn't be having, you know, leaving the dairy alone. We know dairy doesn't do well for black Americans. It's some of the different things that we can do ourselves without, because most of the time when they, they give you certain things, the so-called treat things, it just treats symptoms, it don't treat the, the disease. So a lot of times we can go it on and do some things ourselves, so please go see your doctor. Yeah, pay, yeah, pay, pay attention, they discover, whatever they discover, you know, but you won't know about uh, polyps or anything if you do not go and see your doctor regularly and do the things that you need to do, okay? But also when it comes to, you know, people getting colon cancer and stuff like that, the American diet strips out all the fiber out of the diet. So you have people that never uh, uh, have fiber in their diet. Like you gotta have some fiber. You can't just run around here without fiber. 
You need some sort of fiber in your life. And I'm not talking about fake fiber like Metamucil. I'm talking about real fiber that's in food that God created. We need fiber in our diet. We got to take care of ourselves. We have to as men and women so we can be here for our families, etc. See, See, them folks and the way they live, we let them live the way they want to live. We understand from our culture, we talk about how we are more so with the land, more so with herbs and roots and all of that. That's natural. The, the unfortunate thing is we got away from our herbs. We got away from our roots, you understand, from the land. And we start eating all this fake food and Frankenstein food and all this stuff these folks give us. And you wonder why we rank so high on uh, 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 high blood pressure and rank so high on diabetes and rank so high on this is because we start eating their food. When our older people, cause I, cause I, I'm so glad I got to live to see it. Our older people didn't eat they mess. Our older people cooked at home and I and noticed more black people live longer in the previous generation than this one. Why? Cause they not eating freaking fast food. They wasn't in a restaurant every day. They wasn't getting drunk and getting high all the freaking time. They was at home eating their food at home. It was like to say, cooking your food with love. I'm just saying that we just need to get back to that as a people to preserve the life of our people instead of us being always so high on, on certain diseases that when doctors said 90% of the diseases in America are preventable, 90%, even they say even cancers are preventable in this country, according to doctors. But yet our wicked government don't enforce things to make, cause you can't just give people a free range to do it. Cause they're not going to do it. Unfortunately, I've seen it. Well, if you just have a little bit of this, it's okay. Americans don't know how to have a little bit of anything. You need to have regulation on certain things to protect the public, especially our children, children with uh, uh, diabetes and obesity and all kinds of things, children. But it is, is so we have to take care of ourselves folks. But when it comes to our, 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 our brother, OJ, and, and, and what, you know, he's done. I saw, you know, some of the folks, um, and I'm going to go back here. I'm going to read y'all some things. Cause you know, if I post it, it's going to be a problem, but let me, let me get back here real quick. Give me a two seconds. I want to read y'all some of the things here. These folks are saying about OJ Simpson. Um, hold on. Give me a second. Let me see him go down here. You know, people are, are, are sitting up here. Um, they say an old Jojo C were releases a song called karma and five days later, OJ Simpson dies. And you know, it is, it is, it, it's, it's things like that. Pe people are posting, uh, talking about the devil, uh, OJ's pulling up to hell and, 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 you know, it's just so many different things that these people, um, are posting, but, but this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen, this is the thing. Don't even waste your time reading that mess. I, I, I don't, you know, because they're gonna, they're gonna do what they do. I've learned over the years that certain negativity, I don't read certain negativity. I don't listen to, um, and even when it comes to OJ, and I would even say to OJ Simpson's family, focus more on your father, your grandfather, and all the good times you had with your father and grandfather. You said, uh, Miss Possum, eating at home with family, always visiting, representing, yeah. Oh, Ville Plot of Louisiana. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we got to get back to that. And, the time, and during the time of OJ, black America ate at home. We ate at home during the time of OJ. Every blue moon we may go out, but all this, you know, you hear now this dating culture stuff about you got to send me $50, $100 for, for a restaurant. Like, are you crazy? You better get your behind in there and go cook. But, but we have a lazy, lazy society today. Lazy. Like tr the tradition of cooking is just about gone with some people. That's why some men just like, you know what? Why? I just stay by myself. Hell, I order meal preps. I, I don't, I'm not going to be having no woman in here and she can't cook nothing. I just stay by myself. 
That, that wasn't even a, a thought. If you just go back to the 90s, we ain't talking about the 1960s. We talking about the doggone 90s. Look, my, my grandmother, my mother would cook. My grandmother would get offended if you would bring some restaurant food in her house and she got food cooked all the time. She's like, what, what is that? What is that you got? The, go, go uh, get that stuff out of my kitchen. Eat you some real food. That, that stuff not no real food. Oh Lord, don't bring no Chinese food in there. Oh, he was like, what you got? That, now you, now you know, now you know them people, you heard about them people now and what they, what they do over there. I'm on YouTube. I can't fully say, but you know what y'all know, you know what they, you heard they do over there. Uh, uh, don't eat that. I, I'm gonna cook you some food over here. Man, my grandma was so cold. She can take leftovers from, from different meals and make a whole new meal out of it. My, I used to love just eating like, like just eating my grandmother, you know, every day, every day. And listen, you talking about fiber. We would get our fiber every day. Every day. My grandma made some beans. She made some sort of rice, some sort of gravy or some sort of meat or breakfast. If she, you talking about, you know, people are getting that jelly. You make no jelly. My grandma would make them preserves and she, and you know, I, I remember it took me, Oh, so many years before I even ate biscuits out of a can. Cause my grandma would always make the biscuits, them homemade buttermilk biscuits. She would make that and she'll make that neighbor across the street had some figs. My grandfather, he had grew okra and he had grew watermelon. Battle for life said, thanks for, for respecting what is needed in our culture. You're great. And I appreciate it. Now I'm just telling y'all what it is. So they would trade, you know, Hey, they'll give, they, they'll give my grandma and them a big, them big brown bags full of figs from the tree. My grandfather would give them big bag fulls of uh, okra. See, that's that barter system that black Americans would do. That's why you didn't need no cash money. All you had to say was, okay, oh, you got this. I'll do that. Okay. Well, if you come help me paint my house, I'll go help you, you know, do something on your car. Or if you do this for me, Hey, you know, I'll be out of town. Can you cut my grass for me? And then when I come back, I'll do this. That's how black Americans had traded things is through the barter system. You didn't have to put your kids in no dog on daycare because either grandmama, auntie or somebody in the neighborhood who just take care of kids and no people wasn't no perverts like they are today. Now, I mean, you always have perverts, but not like the explosion of perversion you have today. You can, Hey, bring your kids to certain places and you could pay them, you know, whatever they say, let's give me, give me whatever. Or, Hey, get, you know, go buy me some groceries or something. And they'll watch your dog on kids. Well, you have to put them in no daycare. Now I'm talking about this was happening in the nineties. Yes. Even that time of freak Neek, the nineties, that stuff was happening in the nineties. I'm telling you, America has really went down in a short time period. I'm gonna say America start going down. In my opinion, I don't know what happened. I say from starting from 2005, 2006, it started going down. We start losing. We had, we had in this country, some sort of shame. Like, you know, you see someone like sexy red today, sexy red would have never made it in the nineties. She could have, she could have been with maybe Luther Campbell or something, but she would have never been with the mainstream. And so many people defend that. I mean, oh, that is a whole different conversation in itself. You know, your, your times of your Michael Jackson's and your Janet Jackson and Prince was still around and your Whitney Houston's was still around and you know, just true talent, true talent from black America. Now what we got. Now look what we got today. We are a shadow of ourselves, but like I always say, if you are alive and you breathing, you can always turn back. You can always do that. Nothing is, nothing is so far gone. You're far gone when you, when you pass away, you can't change anything when you're gone. 
but you could turn around. You can actually make those changes in your personal family. Get back to cooking at home. Say, look, we're going to at least cook. Can you at least cook six days a week at the house? Maybe one day go out. Or can you say, I'll go out every two weeks to, we don't have to get drunk all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to get drunk. Some of y'all like to get drunk. Some of y'all like to get, get high all the time. It's a sad thing if you got to be high all the time. Can you get high on life? Can you enjoy life without ha having some sort of chemical and even all the mess y'all using to get high today? That uh, uh, marijuana is not the same as it was back in the 90s. Back in the 90s, people grew it naturally. And that's what they was using. Today, do your research. They putting all kinds of chemicals in all those, that, that stuff you think you getting, they lacing it with things that I'm telling you, it is not the same stuff that they was using back in the nineties. Yeah. Uh, jet black. They were saying that this white guy had actually, um, uh, admitted a serial killer admitted to those murders. But nothing, oh, he's just saying that, he just whatever. But why why would he want to admit to that? Why? But when even if somebody admit to it, they just say, they want to say OJ. They want to say OJ. But they still and then then this uh Bruce Jenner slash Caitlyn Jenner gonna post good riddance about OJ. I'm like, oh, you still mad that and I believe it now that OJ piped down your wife at the time, Chris, that was you mad about. Cause you saw, you saw, saw, I mean, cause that good riddance was, 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 was some emotion. OJ didn't do him nothing. And you know, word on the street is, I, we, of course, everybody say allegedly that, uh, Chloe, Chloe could be possibly OJ's. I mean, you know, that was going around for a long time. Now Chloe didn't chop her face up now, but she, she didn't, she didn't look like none of them. She was taller, bigger than they, all of them were. I mean, shoot, you never know. I didn't hear nothing about OJ to do no uh, DNA test. Like, so why he so salty? And like, why are you mad about it? Why, why is, I guess, Caitlin mad about OJ? OJ didn't do nothing to Caitlin. Bruce, maybe, if he piped down his wife. But shoot, I mean, I understand why OJ piped her down. I get it. Because could you imagine as a woman, you got you got your, your husband, and now your husband is coming up to you telling you he wants to be a woman now? I'm like, how do you come back from that as a woman? Like, I know Kate, I know Chris went to a lot of therapy for that one. You can't tell me that woman didn't go to a lot of therapy. Uh, I know she did. Cause come on, any woman, any woman in general would freak out that their husband is now saying, don't call me the name that I married you under. Call me this new name. I, I look, 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 I, I'm just, I'm, it, it's just a conversation. I mean, it's real life. Cause these things happen. These look about, you know, with trans is a, is a real thing. I was shocked about someone that I knew growing up. Um, I haven't seen in a long time, very, very long time. And they're trans now, young, a uh, young woman. And I was like, are you serious? Like, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Could not believe it. They look like the same person, of course, but they was also taking the hormones, but still look like the same person. Like, you have you seen some of the, the women that's tra trying to transition to a man and they still look like a girl, you know, they still even look soft as a girl, but you see they still trying to, you know, trying to have a mustache and beard and all that stuff. I'm like, I just kind of, that's a conversation in itself. 
but it's rare if you see, for me, I just, for me to actually know somebody that actually, you know, like, could you remember them as a girl? And then now you're seeing this and like, what? You know, it, it's, it's just, it's just interesting. All right, Lamont. It wasn't like that. No, ain't nobody said that about OJ. No, OJ had plenty of women, plenty out here. OJ had a roster, <laughs> and then you know out there in LA, you know that's three hundred four Central out there. That that's from LA to Vegas. That corridor, that's a three hundred four area right there. Please, anybody, anybody, any man, if he can't get no woman, he can go. He can go to Los Angeles. To, to uh, 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 Las Vegas, he can go in them two cities for sure. You probably gonna have to pay a trick tab, but but he'll get him something through there. Everybody know that. Well, Lindell, of course you can't, Lindell, of course. But like I said, you know, I'm gonna hold off on some of that conversation because you know what platform we on. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. OJ had a lot of women. OJ had a lot, of, and that's another reason they didn't like OJ. Let me let me let me touch on that before I wrap up. They didn't like OJ, them folks, the males, because OJ was knocking down all the white women. Oh, OJ was knocking them down. And one thing they can't stand is to see a black man knocking down a bunch of them them women. They hated that about OJ. They couldn't stand that. Oh, they couldn't stand it. They still, they still can't stand that to this day, but it's a little different today. I will say that. Like if you got that kind of, you know, white female with a black scent, a BBL, braids, Jordans, they cool, <laughs> they cool. But if you got that kind of white female, they, that, I guess the aesthetic of a Taylor Swift, like what they like, that's when they'll get mad at you. So it has to be a certain type that, that you're getting. Um, but shoot, the majority of them these days, not even trying to copy a Taylor Swift aesthetic. They all trying to wear Jordans, BBLs and everything else. Now, if you look at them and they all trying to speak with a black scent, Aquafina ain't the only one. So it's a, it's a way, it's a way different day and time. <laughs> then when OJ was alive to 2024, oh yeah, they all trying to look the same. For real, for real. It's like everybody trying to be Keisha. It don't matter what community they come from. But thank y'all for, you know, drawing us on the live stream. They greatly appreciate it. Uh, make sure you click the subscribe button. It's very important. Make sure you click the like button. And also, make sure to download our African Diaries for News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store. It's very important. We're trying to grow that thing, and, and uh, we appreciate you to say Tupac and OJ had OJ and Quincy Jones' daughter in, in the 90s. Hey, hey, man, the game is what it is. The game is what it is. You don't control your children much as you would like to. Uh, make sure you, you join and get a membership on there. We're trying to grow to get our first goal of 10,000 members um, so we can be completely self-sufficient because that's very, very important. we got to focus on self-sufficiency. Cause these platforms are what they are. It's not ours. So on African diaspora news channel, the app itself, the website, that's what we own and ownership is key, but we can't do it without the people. And if we can just have, you know, 10,000 people from our platform to say, I believe in that enough to try to make sure we support that. That's like having a million plus subscribers on YouTube and we'll be completely free to do a whole lot more than what we're doing now. But thank y'all for listening. And, uh, and we'll see y'all next time on um, the live stream. And I don't even know what I'm going to talk about tomorrow, but uh, we'll definitely find a topic for sure that you probably